besides the fact that they are so accessible, so exciting, and so popular among students, there's something really fascinating about watching a new literature emerge. A new kind of book is starting to appear in classrooms and in university libraries. Books that are quite unusual and unorthodox when we compare them to more traditional books. These books, however, are immensely popular and seem to come to us from all sorts of traditions. Last year, in the Changing Profession column of the publication of the Modern Language Association, Hilary Shute enthusiastically announced that scholarship on comics, and specifically on graphic narrative, is gaining traction in the humanities. We all know this. Graphic novels have won widespread critical acclaim, not only among comic book lovers, but among literary critics in recent years. What's special about Shute's article in the PMLA is that she identifies the need at universities to start teaching graphic novels as an emergent literature. Art Spiegelman taught a graduate seminar at Columbia University last year on comics marching into the canon. But let's back up and define our terms. A graphic novel is a book that, like a novel, tells a story via a plot, but that does so principally through sequential images. Typically, there is accompanying text, voiceover of a narrator, or dialogue bubbles. But text is not essential to the genre, with the result that the graphic novel is often considered more akin to cinematic narrative form than novelistic narrative form. That is why graphic novels look like pre-production storyboards for movies. The term graphic novel was coined in 1964 by Richard Guile, who used it to discriminate between short comics and more substantial, sophisticated works. And, it is true that in America, drugstore comic books, funnies, and superhero stories, typically aimed at a juvenile audience, are often seen as the principal precursors to the modern graphic novel. And it was a very successful author of comics who produced what is widely considered to be the first American graphic novel, A Contract with God, in 1978. But it would be a mistake to think of all graphic novels as merely extended comics. It's important to remember that although graphic novels are relatively new, they have emerged simultaneously from different countries around the world, from different traditions and different cultures. In Europe, illustrated books have a long history. Such artists as William Blake are often seen as precursors of the European graphic novel. Hergé's series The Adventures of Tintin is truly notable as an early precursor to the modern graphic novel in Western Europe. In Japan, however, Imaki picture scrolls and the caricatures of the celebrated artist Hokusai are often seen as the precursors of the modern Japanese graphic novel. You can see this influence operating in the works of Osamu Tezuka, often called the Walt Disney of Japanese animation or in the chilling international bestseller series, Death Note. As a result, the term graphic novel often groups together works that share less in common with each other than with the arts of their national native traditions. Furthermore, many critics make much of a split within each tradition between commercial mainstream works and independent, countercultural, or underground works, a division that only complicates the problem of genre definition. For example, on the one hand you've got the commercially successful Dark Knight Returns, the Batman graphic novel. On the other, you've got series that live underground for many years and only achieve public recognition and, and critical acclaim years later. Like the Love and Rocket series by the Hernandez brothers that explores life on both sides of the Mexican-US border over several generations. Complicating matters even more, the term graphic novel groups together works that are fictional, non-fictional, and those that bridge the gap between being a satire, parody, metafiction, or work of propaganda. You have Persepolis, an autobiography of a young woman growing up in Iran during the revolution. Wobblies is a compiled history 
of the Radical Union, the International Workers of the World, or IWW, or Wobblies, edited by a professor at Brown University. And Working is a graphic adaptation of interviews from Stud Turkle's celebrated collection, Working. Barefoot Jen, the multi-volume memoir of surviving Hiroshima, is a devastating work that is used today to promote nuclear disarmament. A personal favorite is Burma Chronicles, the story of a stay-at-home father who deals with the difficulties of parenting while his wife, who works for Doctors Without Borders, is gone for long hours every day. Mouse, Art Spiegelman's Pulitzer Prize-winning graphic novel from 1986, a two-volume memoir of the Holocaust, is taken as both the epitome of the graphic novel and at the same time as a work impossible to categorize. If you've never read a graphic novel, this is certainly the place to start. The Sam Houston State University Newton Grisham Library is making some very exciting acquisitions this fall. Take a few moments, step into the library, bring a friend along, and check out a graphic novel. Mm -hmm.